Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Kyborg95 in the three-minute pool on ICC. First game of the session, I am once again in the mood to play some three minutes. And let's try to play well this session. I think I played reasonable last time. Okay, knight c6. That strikes me as a little weird. I'm just going to play knight f3. I'm not going to think about it too much. Could play d5, but I have a feeling he's trying to goad me into playing that move. So let's just develop. Bishop e3, queen d2. Castles, that sort of thing. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to play here. Yeah, black pressure z4. Defending with f3 looks prudent. I'm going to play this rook to d1. Keep this other one for operations maybe on the king side, like f4. This move is probably worth preventing, b5. Pretty high three-minute rating for this player. Good player from the looks of it. And I played him before. I want to say this is a GM, actually, and not an IM. Okay, queen a5, active move. d6 is weak, but it's a little hard to target that pawn. Maybe queen f4? Queen f4, yeah, looks decent. Let's do it. Trying to get myself to trust my instincts more. Go with my first instinct move rather than hemming and hawing and losing on time. Okay, that challenges me to play queen takes d6. Can I get away with that? Queen takes d6. If rook d8, I have queen c5. Offering the trade, but he has bishop takes d4 in reply. Uh-huh. Okay, so maybe I can't play that. Just looking for any in-between move I could try there, but I don't think it's working. So, all right, I'll pull the queen back. Maybe the knight will be off sides here. It's still up in the air. Okay, if I take, I'll take with the pawn. Bishop b6. It's kind of awkward for the queen, but maybe not enough. Let's play g3. He immediately plays c5. Okay. This is a transformation I don't think I mind. Let's go b3. I want to go knight d5. I might play bishop c4 even to get a real stranglehold on that square. Now, let's first bring this rook in. d4 is a nice square for black, but they can't get a piece there quite yet. So just looking to double the rooks. I feel like I should be a little better right now. B5 is prevented. Okay, let's jump in. With B6, I'm thinking maybe A5. A5, they kick the, this piece away. Let's go here. Let's probe a little bit. Probe this pawn. And then I'll come back. Maybe Rook D7. Yeah, this should definitely be better with the bishop versus the knight, with the knight ineffective. Open position, pawns on both sides of the board. Control of the d-file. I'm liking it. Looking at rook d7 ideas. Could play rook d8 here. Yeah, rook d8 looks like a good place to start. Hmm. This is a neat little tactic, which I think, ah, he has, I'm going to do it. He has king here, but I can play rook c8 in that case. Queen d7. Queen d6 instead, okay. Let's go here. Don't think I should trade queens. Let's bring this over. Problem is time is low. Let's check. Hmm. <clears throat> 
looking for an attack against e5, but it's hard to come by. Uh, let's go here. This is not a good mover. Takes f3. Mm. Yeah, I think that's probably just losing. Now I'm down on time, but g4, king h4 is coming. Okay, well, I was playing a good game there, but the clock, the clock got the better of me. Yeah, this position looks very nice, if not close to winning for white. Rook d8, king f7. Couldn't see a direct win with bishop c4 or anything, because the king is coming to e7. Bishop takes a6 was a nice shot, because rook takes a6, rook d7. Yeah, I suspect it's decisive, or, well, surprisingly not. So even though I pick up a pawn, that king e7 move forces my rook back. Yeah, that did break my coordination. I'd like to retreat my rook somewhere on the D file to keep control of that file, but black does have rook takes a6 in reply. So I did this, but... Oh, I just missed rook takes e8. Oh, that was easy. Rook takes e8 check. Hmm. Deflect the king away. That's a basic tactic. Was not on my radar. I was mostly concerned with defending my bishop, which is now hanging. That's why I was expecting queen d7. Well, that's not why I was expecting it. I just thought black would play queen d7. It looked more normal than queen d6. Ooh. Yeah, rook takes e8 would have ended the game immediately. Instead, I played this weak move, queen e2, which I guess keeps some edge, but then black was able to get their knight into the game, and it's kind of a delicate position that I didn't play well. Okay, so we lose the first game. Let's get back in the pool. I think this is uh, Grandmaster Kodrich, I want to say. Yeah, Dennis Kodrich. I think this player is a GM. Clearly quite good. Like I was saying, 2491 in the three-minute pool puts you in probably the top five at any given time. Maybe even higher than that. Let's check. Yeah, so he's right at number five. Along with some other GMs. What else to say about this game? So when I played queen f4 attacking d6 and f6, on knight h5 I would like to play queen takes d6, but I believe it does run into rook d8, and I have trouble with the d4 bishop. So going back was prudent, I think, and then g3, trying to keep a piece out of f4. I don't like c5 by black. Somehow that strikes me as a mistake, but the computer says it's the best move. Maybe because bishop b6 is annoying, black can't put a rook on d8 for fear of that bishop d6 double attack. But this transformation looked to be in my favor, I thought, because I have the d5 square to work with now. And now I got knight d5 in, and this felt very good. Attacking c5. Yeah, queen g5, that was appropriate. Come back to the d file. So when you have one open file in a position like this, the play is almost always going to revolve around that file, unless there are immediate tactics elsewhere. So the fact that the d file is in my control, my rook is ready to invade to d7, this is a promising position. And as I mentioned during the game, the knight versus the bishop, with the knight being inactive and the bishop having some room to operate on this diagonal. It can come to c4, it's pressuring the pawn. Uh, I think that should translate to a winning game for white. Okay, Amr Sob. I am Amr Sob as the next opponent. Getting a Slav. I'm going to take on c4, and he's playing this aggressive line, gambiting the pawn. This is a line that Simon Williams has played against me before. It's not so easy for black to meet, especially in a short time control situation. Okay, g3. That's unusual. I'm going to go here. I'm going to play a6. Just reinforce this. suspect I should probably kick the knight. Queen h5. Hmm. So just g6 here. Yeah, let's defend against the checkmate. And he wants to keep the pin alive. So if I play bishop g7, I think I'm inviting a sacrifice here, so I don't think I should do that. I'm kind of inclined to take, or play bishop b4 maybe. Let's try bishop b4. I'm just going to put this under pressure. And he castles. Okay, wow. Really playing in Grandmaster William style. <laughs> Simon is out there approving of this guy's play somehow. 
Okay, let's go knight d7. I know I'm inviting that sacrifice that I just mentioned, but I don't like the look of other moves, so I'm going to keep open the option of castling queenside. I want to put my queen on e7 next. He takes, okay. Should probably take this way. We're going to get a trade of the rooks, we do. Okay, now I clearly can't castle queenside. But maybe with a couple pieces off the board, I have more chances. Knight e4, bring in the heat. Okay, but I have these squares covered at least. So let's go here. I might still seek a safe haven for my king. Maybe bring it to c7. Because if ever I castle short now, I run into queen takes h6. So that's not looking hot. Yeah, rook d1. Queen f8 is an interesting way to threaten this capture. But I would feel better if my king was safe, so I think I'm just going to do this. Just looking for tricks. He might have some knight takes f7 business. I'm not going to calculate that. I think, I think that should be fine. Again, trying to go with my first instinct. My instinct says this is all right, so that's what's going to happen. I probably should have taken on d2 there. So I just realized I run into knight takes f7, but okay, this is still playable. This knight can't move because of queen takes g5 if they do that, so. It might be time for this. Yeah, let's do it. So threatening to take on g5. Maybe next knight d3? Oh, he's going to go for the sack. All right, interesting. Got ourselves a brawl here. Let's play this. Get my knight back. Useful for defensive purposes. Queen trade would be awesome in this situation. He's probably not going to agree to it, though. Just pull this up. He might just pick off this pawn at some appropriate moment. Ah, knight d6 is good. That's pretty annoying. Hmm. Okay, I think I gotta do something like that. Can take on d5, uh, and then take on b5 with check. I'm just gonna go back. Knight f7 was a threat there. My poor rook is out of the game. Yeah, so he just eats a pawn. Let's do this. Maybe queen takes b2. I have 16 seconds. Wow. Hang in there, John. <laughs> You've got yourself out of stickier situations than this in the past. Okay, let's go for that. I know he has rook a7, but I got to take my chances. Okay, let's go for a check. Oh, I checked on the wrong square, I think, though. I should have checked on a light square so I could reach h5. What's happening in this end game? I don't know. Can take. I have rook b2. Another four queen game. Oh, you can just take that. Okay. And I'm down on time. So what happened here? I think I defended all right, but I made some inaccuracies probably right around here after bishop d2. I should just take the bishop on d2. Because 
I didn't realize that on king c7 takes, I can't take with the queen. I'd much rather keep my knight on d5 where it's stable. If I take with the queen, that allows knight takes f7. So, yeah, I think bishop takes d2, force white to take with the rook, and then play a move like king c7. And yes, my dark squares are weak, but the pawn that I'm up is pretty important. And I feel like with white's queen out of play, black should be doing well. That might be my optimistic assessment. Computer says equal after bishop takes d2, which means that white has compensation since white is down one pawn. Complicated middle game. In the opening, I don't know. I haven't encountered this permutation of this line with g3, bishop g2. So that was new to me. Just kind of flicking through and seeing. Computer hates that move. Allowing a takes b5, says I should take on c3 right away. So a takes b5, a takes b5. That happened in the game, right? Now it says knight takes d5 is best. Ah, it gives the line knight takes d5, c takes d5, knight takes e6. And don't trade the rooks yet, interestingly. And then fe6, queen e6, queen e7, trade, trade, take on g6. White does get a lot of pawns in that line. I'm not going to spend too much time analyzing these three-minute games just to try to get in a rhythm and play more games. Mm. And here I decided to flee towards the queen side, but maybe the king side is better. King f8 is not even a move I considered. King f8 and try to go to g7, although I probably should consider this direction. It just seemed to me at the time that I should stay as far away as possible from white's queen, so that's why I played king d8. But yeah, I can see the virtue of hiding the king on the other flank. Yeah, and I think after the, the capture on b4, white has a great deal of play. And four. Sack on e6 was good. Yeah, the sack on e6 was correct. So here I'm up two points of material, but white has a lot of compensation. Strong pawn structure. My pieces look disorganized. That's kind of the downside of grabbing the pawn in this line. Yeah, and once that knight got into d6, this was trouble. Did I have a perpetual at the end? I have a feeling I missed a perpetual somewhere. Like right at the end. I took on d4, king g2. The engine says this is equal. Queen b2 check, king h3, bishop takes d7, queen takes d7, and then c3. That's scary. For some reason, I thought that if this were to happen, I could get to the uh, d1, h5 diagonal. So if I could if I could move my knight like my queen like a knight right now and play queen d1 check, I would draw because then after king g2, queen e2, king h3, I would have queen h5. And that's a perpetual check net right there but to my shock i realized that i can't get my queen onto a, a light square to check like that so this was just very very tough with the time situation even here it's apparently a draw but i didn't manage okay interesting game let's get back in there continue fighting i'm shedding some three minute points especially with that last game because this player was only right around 2000 which seems pretty slow they played a strong game there or pretty slow. Pretty low, I should say. <laughs> Take out the S on the word slow. Um, and that's no offense to you players rated around 2,000. Like, that's plenty decent. But for an IM, I would normally expect to see a little bit higher of a rating. As someone pointed out in my last video, though, the, the pools on ICC, they're tough. Man, like, these pools, the three- and five-minute pools, are probably the toughest uh, conglomeration of players on the Internet. So let's play d4, this hyper-accelerated dragon. Uh, you know what? I'm going to play d5. I know this takes us into d-pawn territory, but I just feel a little more comfortable with this setup. So let's go c4. Guard the pawn. h3. Now we're in theoretical territory. e6 is what black usually does. Main line, Benoni. Against Grandmaster A. Hoffman. Alejandro Hoffman. Gran Maestro. Uh, I think I'm just going to play bishop g5. I'll allow knight b4. I can just go back to b1, I think, in that case. Let's play a4. Enhance control over b5. Aha, uh -huh, now he wants the square. Okie doke. I see your point, sir. With that maneuver. Let's pull the bishop back here. 
You may consider closing the position now. Hmm. Bishop f4 invites e5 is the thing. Okay, let's do this. Let's try to goad him into playing g5. I don't know if this is wise or not, but at least we keep some options open. Hmm. Okay, knight d2. Just want to observe that, that h5 square. This looks like it might be useful later, so I'm going to play it. Okay, this is a weird looking idea. I'm actually thinking like knight a1 to c2 <laughs> to try to get rid of that knight later. I probably had better ideas in my chess past, but this might do in a pinch. Okay, let's play queen d2. Knight takes e4, I have rook takes e4, so nothing doing there. Okay, now we're going to shift targets. I think I'm going to go after this a6 pawn. Maybe knight c1 to d3. Maybe that's what I should be doing. It's also knight into a5. It's interesting. But nah, let's, let's stick with this plan. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, b3. Hmm. Attack that rook. It takes it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, this knight is bothersome. But okay, maybe I can get rid of it like this. He might be willing to trade uh, his b pawn or his a pawn for my b pawn. Rook takes b3, rook takes a6. Looks like we're going to have that. Hmm. I'm going to play this out of an abundance of caution. Rook takes d6 looks like it might involve some knight takes h3 business. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to play this way. Yeah, position's fine. Try to attack d6 again. Hmm. Let's kick this out. It does have g5. Didn't play it though. Where's that knight going? e8? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, let's take. Let's see what you're up to. Okay. I have some pressure here. Ah, Bishop takes g6. I had similar tactic to one I missed against Kodrich. Let's just see if he repeats. Does not want to repeat. I wouldn't either if I were him. <laughs> oh boy. Lose that c4 pawn. That's annoying. Mm. Invite 95. Not smart. I can take on c6 now. Okay, this is essentially over. Mm. Again, too slow. Much too slow.
The slight advantage in the end game doesn't matter if I have only 20, 30 seconds left by that time I hit this point. Yeah, just gotta play faster. I think I held an edge. Not sure about the opening. Like, once the knight got back to b4, it wasn't looking like I had achieved much. And I kind of wonder if black could have played more aggressively on the king side, like g5 at some point. But certainly the way that black played is okay. With the queen side eventually getting liquidated. And I think right around here, yeah, white should hold a slim advantage based on my A file control, the pressure on the d6 pawn. But time was a bigger factor. All right, John, you started, you're starting out 0-3. Your fans are just begging for you to win a game. <laughs> so let's try to do so. I shouldn't miss those tactics, though. Admittedly, in, with this one, I saw it right after I moved, but bishop takes g6 check. That's a move I got to find. Bishop takes g6, king takes g6, rook takes f8. It would still be tough to convert even that position, especially given the time situation, but that was a, a freebie right there. I don't think he gave me much else the rest of the time. In fact, right around here, I should probably trade my light square bishop for the knight. Yeah, but even that might be uh, requiring some suffering if black plays rook b4. My light square bishop didn't turn out to have too many targets. With all these pawns on dark squares, all black has to do is defend d6. And the rook and the knight can cause some havoc. Yeah, black got in knight e3, which I missed, and picked up the c4 pawn. And now it's close to losing anyways for white. Probably is losing. With this move order in the opening, so black playing bishop g7 on move 3... The more Sicilian-like way to play that would be knight c3. Okay, Ohan Essien is next. Let's play a Sicilian. Maybe I'll play a classical. Play knight c6. Played this a bit in the last video too, even though it didn't go so well. Let's see if we can get something going. Hmm. Go queen a5. Just eye this bishop. Mm -hmm. Inviting white to take and play knight d5. So this structure. But maybe it's playable for me. Because I can get e6 in, try to kick this knight back. And so on. Go from there. I want some more experience in this structure. A6, just stop anything from coming to B5. I'm going to try for this knight trade. So you've sabotaged your king position in playing this line if you're black, but there are some positives to this. So e5 is coming next. Hmm. Okay, let's play b5. If f5, I think I will play e5. That surrenders the d5 square, but I'll try to make counterplay elsewhere. So here, just letting me attack this knight, huh? Okay, retreats. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Maybe I will castle now. That's not out of the question to do this. Versus putting my king on e7. Let's play king h8, just an insurance move for the future. Now I'm thinking I want to put my bishop back on g7 and perhaps go for f5 in the future. Yeah, so white unpins. 
Knight c4 would be nifty. Let's play this, though. Maybe prepare knight c4. Mm -hmm. He wants that attack on d6. But now I can play this move. Some knight a3 in mind. Or knight e3. So clearly he can't take the knight. I think he's got to play a king move. Like king a1. So he's going to do that. But now check. This seems like it should be very close to winning. King here I can take on a on c2. Just checking if there's anything else. No, this is good. King a1. Might be just practically forced here. Yeah. Okay. Any forced win? Nah, none that I see. I'm gonna go here. I don't want to trade queens. Queen takes g7. I have bishop g or queen takes f6. Bishop g7. So no worries there. This position is almost just overwhelming though. Um. Let's go here. Let's double up. Looking for F5. Take. Let's check. Let's check again. Okay, I'm going to take and play bishop f3, I think. Really hate to trade queens there, but given the time situation, I think this is the best course of action. Bishop takes e5 is in the air. Um, let's check. We're going to do this next check. Let's take. Bishop c3 in the air. Come on, John. Oh, <laughs> I got the win on time at the end. Okay. Well, I will chalk that one up as a, a pretty good game because the position did seem to be overwhelming after I got a knight c4 to a3 check. But giving myself a heart attack here. So white's position was just barely holding together at this point. This is a position where if I had this over the board, I'd love to think for much longer than I had in the game. Because it just feels like that tactical win is within reach. I just want a pawn. Black was, or white was forced to move their king away. I can't take the knight on e2 because they do take on b6. I have a funny perpetual after that. Rook takes e2, queen takes b6, knight c2, king b1, knight a3, and white can never step to c1 because of rook c2 checkmate, but there should be more. Actually, that might not be a perpetual, never mind, because the king can go to b2 in that line. But let's just focus on these moves before I go on to the next game. Engine says queen c7. Queen a5 felt correct, though, because I want my queen and my rook to coordinate against a2 here. And in this position, e5 is crushing. Ah, e5 attacking the queen and opening this bishop against h3. Yeah, didn't see that at all. E5, and I suppose if queen takes d6, 
I can just calmly take on h3 because my bishop on h6 does a great job of defending that rook. That was a shot I probably had for a couple moves. Yep, even here, after we both brought the rooks over, e5 was still there. I did this. We got a trade. More winning moves. I was minus 12, plus 12, however you want to say it. After d takes e5, <laughs> yeah, this bishop is just going to have its day down the diagonal. Even the game was good. I temporarily go down a piece, but White puts themselves in this close to fatal pin. Ah, uh, yeah, that was sloppy. I missed b4 here, just defending the knight. I thought I had to give up my knight, which is clearly not the case, but we were just in blitz mode at this point. Then we get into this opposite color bishop position where eventually White just tried to sack their rook. Okay, but not a bad game. Interesting one. In this line, black does take on structural defects, but you can see that if the position does become open, that dark square bishop, it may have something to say. And with all these pawns on the sixth rank, it controls a lot of territory along the fifth rank. So it's kind of the thinking in adopting this outwardly very ugly pawn structure. Queen a5 must be dubious though. Yeah, I think I should trade on d4, knight takes d4. Looks to be the move. Does the line go knight takes d4, queen takes d4, then queen a5? I think it might. Attacking the bishop. Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. So as the computer is saying, the capture here is better. Because yes, after queen a5, knight b3, queen c7, this felt a little off with this knight having access so readily to d5 or b5. Black's position is surprisingly resilient, though, once we settle into this middle game. You know, the move that really surprised me that white played was b3. I didn't think that was a good move at all. I guess white played that to fortify c4, stop any knight c4 business. But a weakened c3, it just invites queen c7 with a gain of time. Now white suffers from this superfluous knight problem. Both of these knights would like to access the d4 square, but only one can stand on d4 at a time, of course. All right, we're playing Ohanesian again. Well, maybe I'll repeat this same line if we get the chance. I'll try to use my, my little preparation in between games there. That's pretty rare that we get paired again and uh, with the same colors. Don't know how that works, but... Okay, so he's going to vary first. Bishop c4. Interesting. All right, let's go here. And then we'll play... Let's play a6 first. I just want to control b5. And he's going to go for this structure again. Uh-huh. More aggressive this time. Yeah. I kind of forgot about how poorly I might be placed on that square. Defending f7. This is going to be scary, but... Okay, I'll try it, because <laughs> I don't see too many good alternatives. E6 allows a capture on E6, so that's not good. So F4, what happens then? Knight G6, F5, my knight goes back to E5. White can play Knight E6, but maybe I just move my queen then. It's an odd position. Just F3, okay, restrained move. How about Rook C5 now, though? Rook C5, introduce a little spice to this position. First instinct, John. All right. So, hey, knight takes... Well, not knight takes f3. Knight d3 is in the air. Let's be precise. Okay, what do I do here? Just e6? What do you got planned against e6, my friend? Let's see it. Yeah, that knight moves. Knight d3 check is going to win the queen. So maybe white's obligated to sacrifice a knight here? F4, okay. But knight c6. Let's do it. So I'm still trying to make my rook's presence along the fifth rank felt.
Can't say that I've been in a similar situation to this before. Rook on c5 with the knight behind it, this early in a Sicilian. Looks like a beginner is playing this as black. I'm going to take with a pawn. He's going to sack the knight now, clearly, and just play for open lines. But I think with the position this closed, I should be good here. All right, let's take. You just bishop g7 and castle short. e5 also comes to mind. And I think I like bishop g7 a bit more. Let's do that. And if queen g4, I'm just going to castle. I'm going to let him take e6. I'm not really worried about losing e6. Now he might lift the rook and probably try to go after me on the king side, but I'm thinking f5, queen f6 could be a timely way to save myself. Now yeah, let's do that. If rook h3, just h6. Probably should take this way. Don't want rook takes d6 spoiling my position. Hmm. Okay. Ah, how about this? Check. If he takes, I have queen c8. Pick up the rook. That simplification helps a lot. Definitely. Less attacking units at White's disposal. Queen e4 coming, pressure on b2. Let's go here. Rook c3. Yeah, White's not going to be able to tolerate all that pressure on d3. Queen e2 coming. Okay, and White resigned. Wacky start to this game, and I had a moment of near panic when White played queen h5, because I was not prepared for that move. Queen h5 threatening mate in one on f7. Because if I play e6, this is worth remembering in Sicilian positions, if I play e6, that invites a sacrifice. Not even a sacrifice, just a capture on e6. So if you visualize pawn e6, white can play knight takes e6 or bishop takes e6. This bishop takes e6 still threatens checkmate. So I had to play knight e5, just improvising. And I was expecting f4 here. f4 felt like the critical move. And indeed, the computer likes f4. It doesn't say it's losing for black or anything, but... Felt like that's what white should play. F3, and then all of a sudden, rook c5, and white's queen is feeling uncomfortable along the fifth rank, with knight d3 check being a threat. Yeah, maybe white should exercise some caution and play queen h4, as the computer is saying. But instead, knight d5, and then e6, and again, my rook is making its presence felt along the fifth rank. Last game, it was the dark square bishop. In this case, it's the rook. Mm-hmm. The only problem is, there's numerous ways for white to sacrifice and get some compensation. You saw even in the game, it wasn't completely clear-cut. Yeah, the computer says I'm winning in this position, but my development is backward, white is fully coordinated, I need to get castled soon, so that's why I hustle to play bishop g7 and castles. The clincher in this one was finding this uh, rook takes c2 idea. And even without that, black is probably just winning here, but rook takes c2 is a nice way to simplify the position. And as you saw after king takes, I get one pair of rooks off the board. And I can't stress how important it is to simplify or attempt to simplify when you're under attack. Just the less attacking units your opponent has to throw at you, the better chance you have of survival. So 
Even just that one pair of rooks here makes all the difference. That increases my margin of safety so significantly. All right, let's get back in there. I'm feeling warmed up at this point. I know it didn't start so well, but I want to play a little bit more and see how this goes. You know, suffice it to say, but it's so tough playing three minute and also uh, commentating on your moves. I never want to use that as an excuse if I play poorly or whatnot, but it's just, uh, it's something I've had to realize over time in making these videos. I got to check my, my ego at the door and realize that I'm probably just not going to be able to play the chess I'm capable of when I'm making YouTube videos and commenting on my play. And I have a bad habit of talking too much when I play, so I know that hurts my results. I know I probably play, you know, 100 to 300 points less sometimes than I normally would. Okay, Bochkarev, continue with e4. And getting some fun games out of e4. Really just enjoying it. And by the way, I have started playing a little bit, especially on ICC, without making videos. So I'm trying to take chess more seriously this summer. And maybe with an eye towards playing some GM Norm tournaments later this summer for sure. I, I'm already scheduled to play in one here in Minnesota, but also possibly in the fall. So there are times where I will play online and not record my play going forward. In the past couple years, I've pretty much recorded almost everything, unless I had some technical problem or some weird session that wasn't postable for whatever reason. I generally post close to 100% of what I play, but lately, especially on ICC, where I think the best competition on the internet lies, I uh, have not been posting 100% of my sessions because there are sessions I want to either just relax and blow off steam or try to take seriously myself. But still recording plenty on here, so hope to keep that up as long as, long as you guys keep watching. Okay, I'm actually ahead on the clock, probably because Boch Karev is lagging or something. <laughs> I'm not normally... This far ahead. Now he's actually not lagging that much. Dmitry Bocharov. Don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He probably just got distracted, but these sort of thinks, these long thinks, they just kill you in three minute. Three minute especially, like five minute as well, but okay, he got disconnected, forfeited. I don't know. Maybe he had to leave or something, but his connection didn't seem to be bad. I just pinged him here, and he wasn't experiencing much lag. But Okay, so we get that victory. Undeserved. It would have been an interesting game. This H4 line in the Karakhan threatens the win of... Um, well, it doesn't threaten the win of a piece, but if black plays the routine E6, we'll just illustrate that. So H4, if black just continues E6 as black likes to do in this line getting ready for c5 and knight c6. White has g4 is the point. And black's bishop is rapidly running out of squares and will get trapped. So it seems like a hope chess move playing h4 this early, but in fact, it helps white stake out some territory on the king side and it spices up these positions. So h4 is one of the, the main moves. In this position though, white has a number of different approaches. Even just knight f3 and bishop e2 is quite popular. Um, there's knight d2 as well, trying to send the knight to c3. There's knight c3. I've even seen bishop d3. There's g4 right away. So if you play the Karo Khan as black and you play this bishop f5 main line, you've got to be ready for a number of moves here. I think this is the sharpest variation in all of uh, the Karo Khan complex. Sharper even than the main lines with knight c3 or knight d2 where black takes on e4. And from what I've seen of theory in the past few years, the advanced variation seems like the primary way to challenge this opening for white. So I'm back in the pool. If any of you have Netflix out there, I have a couple good re Netflix recommendations while I wait for a game. Uh, one is a documentary I watched last night. It's called What the Health? Extremely interesting, especially if you are interested in diet and the role that that plays in all of our lives. And the other is a mini-series. It's called The Keepers. Very heavy stuff. It deals with um, abuse in the Catholic Church. I found it to be just fascinating. It's kind of along the lines of 
a mini series that was popular about a year and a half ago called Making a Murderer. It's sort of in the same style as that, although I think this one is even more well done than that one, which is saying a lot because Making a Murderer was an awesome series. But I highly recommend both of those. Okay, we get the same line against Chess Brain 2014. Let's see what they do. So the Grandmaster played h5, and this player does as well. So white's going for a lot of space in this line. This is funny, we're getting a redo. <laughs> Just play the same variation. Bishop b4, okay. I don't really mind the trade on c3, so I'm going to let black do that if they want. Even though I'm going to be left with doubled c-pawns, I don't think the doubled c-pawns will stick around long because you see there's tension between d5 and c4. Probably the pawns will get traded as a result. So how about just this now? Attack b7. Black does have counter pressure on c3, so I'm probably not threatening to take on b7 yet, but that looks irritating. Now I'm kind of torn between bishop a3 and bishop d2. Also, there's just bishop e2. Yeah, let's just play bishop e2. I'll keep this bishop flexible. Get ready to castle short. That's definitely the area my king should aim for because the, the queen side is open. Knight b6 would be interesting now, but okay, block just develops. All right, let's just castle. So now queen takes b7 could be a threat. And if I take it now, he has rook b8. That traps my queen, so let's just take this way. So I'm thinking I really might want to post this bishop on a3. Kind of glad I didn't commit it to d2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's just preserve this guy. Black could swing the queen over to d5, but that does invite c4. Advancing in the center. So I think with the two bishops plus a mobile-looking center, I should be doing well. Okay, so he wants to put the bishop on d5, but if I play knight g5, bishop d5, I have c4. Seems to be losing material for black, so let's let's challenge black. Might just have to go back to f5 or to g6. Mm -hmm. Now here, bishop a3 or c4? Both moves are looking pretty good. I think I like bishop a3. It seems direct. He quickly plays that. So c4, knight c3... c4, knight c3, probably just bishop f3, and then knight is really off sides. What about c3, c4, knight f4? Just bishop f3 even there. Yeah, I'm liking the look of this. This queen is rapidly running out of squares to go to as well. Like bishop b4 almost traps it. You can go to a6 or a4. Hmm. Hmm. Let's bring this over. Just more defensive c4. Bishop c5 also crossed my mind, but I wasn't sure about knight d th or bishop d3 as a reply. Let's take that guy. Okay, this is interesting. Ah, I see their idea. It's clever. There's knight e2 check in the air. That I missed. Hmm. Definitely missed that. Um...
Don't like this development. Queen e3. Okay, let's play c5. <laughs> I gotta do something. Hmm, they don't take it. Interesting. This still happens. I still wind up losing material. That was a bummer. Ugh. <laughs> this is gross. I'm just trying to blockade. Doing my best. Bring the king up. Ugh, that was a terrible move of mine that I just made. Oh, knight b3, hello. <laughs> hello, John. Okay. Undeserved victory. Undeserved. Messed up a glorious position. Hmm. Rook FC1 was a lemon. That was a bad move. Let me check this position. I've got a lot of space. Black's uncastled. I've got the two bishops. Why did I not just end this game here? <laughs> okay, I mean, it's not so easy to break down Black's position. G3 is the recommendation of the computer. I thought I was being all sophisticated with Rook FC1, but that does put myself in the line of fire when black plays knight e2 eventually yeah f6 and here i ate up oodles of time best move is g3 attacking the knight black found their way through the complications here nicely yeah c5 this is all correct knight bd5 i thought black was just gonna uh take on g5 and then after i take on b6 like retake or something but knight bd5 was good because when this knight does have to move and notice i don't have a lot of good squares for this knight h3 is covered twice maybe that's better than what i did yeah it seems like it because i don't lose the exchange that way but couldn't bring myself to play it and here i straight up lose the exchange and i'm in a lost end game what about the opening so i really really doubt black should be able to get away with how they played it had the two bishops everything seemed to be going my way bishop a3 knight here so rook fc1 was more appropriate in this position rather than when I did it. So hold off on c4. Yeah, you know, maybe that's a good point. The c3 pawn is attacked, but why do I have to play c4 and just invite knight f4? Great problems for myself. Yeah, just rook fc1. Hmm, okay. Playing another game. So inexplicably, I've won my last four games. Although the game prior to this doesn't really count because my opponent disconnected in the opening. And this game felt like I should have lost. One thing I'm always trying to work on, and I've mentioned in recent videos though, is just being non-judgmental about your results. You know, certainly you should have a high chess sense of uh, self-esteem and want to win games and want to produce good games, but it's destructive to get too far down on yourself when you do lose because you will lose in chess and you'll lose a lot in chess. So as much as you can mentally disconnect your emotions from winning and losing in chess, the better. And for me, honestly, I found a big way to deal with that is just to laugh at yourself. You know, ultimately, chess is just a board game, right? Like, there's way more important things in life. I love chess. I've spent a great deal of my time on chess. It's my profession. It's my passion. But uh, chess is not important enough that it should affect my, my mood on a daily basis. Certainly, I've had games, especially over the board games, that are hours long. You know, and there's not many worse feelings <laughs> in chess in particular. But um, just overall, like... Some of the worst experience I've had mentally and struggles mentally have come from losing very difficult chess games. You know, games where you just spend hours defending a position and around like move 60 or something, you have this one chance to save the game, maybe even reverse the game and get a victory. And then you just, you just blow it. 
down on the clock or something and you just blow that chance and you succumb to the pressure. And it's really tough to sleep after games like that and pick yourself up and say, okay, I got a, another round to play soon. So chess can get you down. Like, don't, don't, uh, don't doubt that. But we all choose how we respond to it. And I've noticed the most successful players, they do have a short memory in terms of the actual results. They'll just, they'll take the lesson away from the game. They'll try to learn something and then they'll get back on the horse and uh, try to play better next time. Okay, I'm going to play a Night Orf against Chicago Chess Tim. Maybe we'll get a main line. I'm just playing all sorts of Sicilians. This is all main line. So Bishop D3 or B5. Or G4 rather are the moves there. Uh, how about how about this variation? The brown variation. Bishop H4, G5. This is a line, believe it or not, I actually used to play. Uh, he just takes. Okay, interesting. If I take this way, attack the knight. There was a brief moment in my chess career where I was playing the Night Orf as black, and this is a line I always had fun playing. He just comes back. Hmm. B5 invites knight takes b5, so I'm a little skeptical of that move. But no, nah, actually, that, that'll be interesting if that happens, so let's do it. Or did I say knight takes b5? I meant bishop takes b5, but yeah can try capturing because bishop takes b5 a takes b5 knight takes he can try to get um three pawns for the piece but he's just going to go for it on the king side i feel like i should play b4 here and actually maybe i should have played b4 earlier but all right we can't we can't nitpick while our time is ticking let's see where this knight goes He might figure that on a4, the knight is going to be under pressure from C, bishop c6 or something. Wow, and he just goes straight ahead. Okay. Certainly possible, but bishop takes c3? Can also take the pawn, but I think bishop takes c3 is even stronger. Yeah, let's just do that. His king is going to be open. More so than my king. Yeah, just take... He takes on h6, queen c5, and already white's on the verge of getting checkmated. Uh, maybe they can move the rook and flee with their king to d1, but... Okay, yeah. So queen c5, I think that's what white's going to do. They're going to try to run. Hmm... Okay, let's just try to keep this closed. Now maybe f5? f5... Knight d4, though. Okay, well... I can play knight c5, if necessary. Which defends e4 and also attack... Or defends e6 and attacks e4. I'm just not going for that king yet, because I don't, I don't feel like it's necessary. The situation makes me a little nervous, though. <laughs> it looks kind of sketchy on the king side. Queen c5. Let's play queen c5. That looks threatening, so... Now might be the time to do it when this king is a little more boxed in. Here I can just take if I want. Yeah, take. If he takes with the A-pawn, he gets mated. He's got to take with the C-pawn. Now check, or... No, it's probably just this. Threaten mate in two. Mm-hmm. check here. I don't want to trade queens yet. Take that for good measure. Uh... 
I'll go here, threaten bishop a4. Should be made. He's got to play queen c2 now. So this is checkmate. Hmm, okay. So we landed the checkmate. How about that? Winning on the black side of a knight orf. <laughs> Not something I've done in quite a while, because... As I mentioned, I used to play the Night Orf when I was around 2000 USCF. I just found it to be too sharp for my taste. I didn't even have that bad of results in it. I just, I was somehow uncomfortable with all the sharp positions you get out of it. This is one of the premier openings in chess. One of the most heavily studied, the sharpest. So this h6 variation is one I used to play. The idea is, and this is probably worth demonstrating... So the idea is, if white plays bishop h4, as they often do, so trying to retain the bishop, you go g5 and you sacrifice a pawn. And this leads to rich compensation for black, because after f takes g5, knight e5, you hit the queen. Queen's going to run somewhere. I actually had one opponent, national master, who played, uh, I think it was queen takes f6 in this position. Or was it e takes f6? I think it was queen takes. Yeah, I had this position one time in a game... Actually, it might have been this. It might have been this. Yeah, I think it was this. And this is not sound for white. White only has two pieces for the queen, but it made for an interesting game. Uh, but normally it goes bishop h4, g5, f takes g5, knight e5, queen e2, knight f g4, and black gets ready to play this next move. So despite being down a pawn, black can rely on this extremely strong knight on e5 and possible compensation on the king's side. And oftentimes black will look to play bishop d7, castle long. Highly interesting variation. It's named after Walter Brown, the seven-time U.S. champion. He wrote a great book as well. It's called uh, The Stress of Chess. And he analyzes this variation in that book, along with another, a number of other Nidorf games. So highly recommend that if you are interested in the Nidorf. But instead, my opponent took on f6 and... I thought here a little bit because normally you would take with the knight, but for some reason bishop takes f6 seemed correct because it hit the knight on d4. Let me just check with the engine. Yeah, bishop takes f6 is good. Knight here. And already the computer likes black. That's probably a nod to the bishop pair and the fact that white is not breaking through in the center. Okay, so b5, white can play e5. How does that work? Because I just always thought I would play this. But then bishop e4... Oh, okay. And trouble here and here. Mm. That I didn't take into account. What if I play d5? Some bad stuff going to happen on g7, threaten the queen. Yep. Yeah, maybe my lack of knight orf experience in recent years is showing in this position. So rook b8 is more prudent. So preparing b5, I would assume. And white can rush pretty quick with these kingside pawns. But I get in b4. This is sort of like the game. This looks pretty intimidating, but a lot of times in the Night Orc, Black can just refrain from opening the king side too much and focus in, on their play in the center and on the queen side. And it turns into a, a fight. So he missed the chance to play b5. The other thing White could try is this sacrifice I was alluding to in order to prepare this. So White gets two pawns plus an attack here and here. But it just felt like White wouldn't be getting the better of it. Yeah, especially in this line when I have pressure on b2. A king e7, I guess, is better. Connect the rooks. Yeah, this does look good for black. I'm just going to very quickly check the rest of this because g5 looked unsound. I think white has to move their knight. Knight a4, knight b1. Yeah, now bishop takes. We bank a pawn. White's king is under fire. I'm not exactly mating white, so the position remains a little unclear. Not sure about h5. I do want to keep this wing closed and shut down white's counterplay, but you saw that after g6, f5, my pawn structure is looking janky. I don't know, and castling queenside, and my king's not going to be the safest over there either. So this is a bit of a scrum at this point, but it looks like I'm getting the better of it. Yeah, knight c5, queen a5. Notice my f5 pawn doing great work pressuring here, and... Especially my bishop, actually. My bishop is probably the star of this position. Pinning white's e-pawn, making sure they can't open the position. Yeah, black's just winning after this. Queen takes a2 is even better. That makes sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. And even though my center is collapsing, what's more important is that White's King is lacking defenders. Oh, did I miss an easier checkmate? Yeah, Queen A1, Queen B2. Which I probably had on the previous move as well. Oh no, it's important that the bishop comes into play, yeah, because if I play queen a1, king here, queen b2, he can just come back, so I need to be able to land my bishop on a4. That's why I played bishop c6. But oh yeah, this is just checkmate. Okay, that's a nice mate. Could have done that. This also wins, because queen c2 is the only way to avoid checkmate. Okay, that was a fun game. I'm going to play just a couple more games, and then call it a session. I've been playing down in rating, but I felt okay about this last game. For the record, as long as we're discussing some opening nuances in theory, um, there's another line that White can play there. Okay, let's focus on Charm City Chess, but the way that White played in that last game is not the only way. You can also play G4 instead of Bishop D3. Okay, let's play the Ruy Lopez. Hmm. This variation I'm not so familiar with. I'm going to do my best, though. I faced this before. I just don't know a whole lot about it. Okay, let's take the center space while we're able. Uh, okay, I'm going to advance and kind of convert this into a King's Indian-like position. Black probably has experience with this line, but I'm hoping that I can demonstrate something here. Let's see which way they take. Take that way, interesting. So is their king going to hide on the queen side, I wonder? Remains to be seen. Probably they'll still castle short. Nope. I was wrong. <laughs> All right, let's get this party started then. Mm -hmm. So black opens this diagonal. Yeah, it's good timing on that move. Let's come here. That's a bummer that I couldn't play knight d4 because the knight takes d5. Bit of a bummer. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if they're going to move this bishop and try for rook g4. They're going there instead. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to maneuver my knights now. Bishop f6 was sort of a threat there, so I think I got to do something about that. And I'm thinking maybe put my queen on d4, knight comes to f4. The f3 square is awfully weak, though, isn't it? Yeah, now bishop f6 is a threat again. Ugh. Do not like that. Yeah, actually, this position might just be downright ugly. Now regretting my knight's placement over here. It's not looking hot. Hmm, okay. Let's do this. Super ugly, but at least this gives black a choice of which way to take. It's not... Not an easy choice, maybe. Okay, let's go. Let's go here. I'm going to attempt to hunker down on the king side. Maybe play for c5. Okay, let's get this in first. It's 
Let's take it and pray. He's going for the exchange sack, okay. Hmm. Don't rightly know how this is going to turn out. Might, might sack two exchanges. Might play just knight takes h4 in this position. Yeah, he does. I gotta get some pieces in the defense to have a chance. I'm not gonna take on e6 because I feel like that's just losing if I do. Okay, I might have a chance this way. My time is awful though, <laughs> once again. My king's gonna be wide open. King b8 probably. Yeah, King B8 strong, because now he's free to attack me. I've got a lot of weaknesses, starting with my king. Check, and the rook comes down. It's looking pretty dangerous. Can even just take here. It's probably good now. Not completely clear yet. Oof, I got him on time. <laughs> Winning ugly. Winning ugly there. Threw in those bullet moves. Queen take <laughs> random check on the back rank to confuse and gain time, and then queen takes c5 in a lost position. Mm. I got outplayed in that one. I think the position after e4 is simply good for black. And maybe my decision to take on f5 in the center that early especially was just bad because... I didn't have much center influence, and b4 is overreaching. That led to problems on that diagonal. Even here, I'm slightly worse, though, probably. Yeah. But after e4, the fact that knight d4 is running into knight takes d5 hurts my chances a lot. The computer says knight d2 is best, which I could see now. He did a good job of exploiting this knight on h4. I'm not sure I agree with the exchange sack, but maybe it's just good. Yeah, bishop takes e5, I think, was practically my only chance. So, yeah, this decision surprised me. h4 followed by rook takes h4. Because it didn't seem like black had to go in for such drastic measures like that. I thought they would just start bringing their pieces over to the king side and building up. But as you saw, and this is a continuation of our discussion earlier, the fact that I was not able to trade queens hurt me. I remember I was talking about that game with Ohanassian, how when I traded those pair of rooks, it increased my margin of safety. So here, the main factor is my king is open and the queens are on the board. If we took away the queens right now, white would be fine, especially if I can eliminate the f-pawn. But with the queens on the board, the fact that white is up, you know, like two pawns in this position or black even takes one pawn, the fact that I'm up a pawn is almost meaningless with my king. Uh, so apt to be checked by the black queen and maybe the rook joining. And as you can see, these pawns are weak enough where I'm probably just going to lose one of them or two of them back anyways. These pawns are disconnected, not even close to queening. So this position is just lost. And I just mention all this because this is what's running through my head in the game. This is how I'm making judgments about what to do. So my strategy there was to try to trade queens. You know, in this position, if I got a chance, I'd love to move my knight away, like knight d4. Try to swap those queens off. But black anticipated that, and that's why he played king b8. So if I do that, he can just flee with his queen somewhere. All right, let's play one last game. I've already played a pretty long session. 
it's been fun. Lots of speculative wins and <laughs> unsound chess, but that's three minute for you. And virtually every game I've got has been sharp. So it's not been lacking in tactics and back and forth combat. Against this variation, g6 on move 3, I believe d4 is the critical move. So I think there's a line that goes d4 takes and then c3, offering a pawn. But I didn't know it enough to venture it. And I know after c3, black doesn't even have to take it. So there's, there's other moves at black's disposal. So I tried to play it in the usual Roy Lopez way. Castle, c3, prepare d4. All right, and Ditto is our last opponent. Smithmore Gambit. Okay, I like to decline this Gambit. I'm not a big fan of taking it. <laughs> I always seem to get in trouble if I take it, so we're not going to do that. Can I play Bishop G4 here? I'm going to do it. And then just develop. So I've traded the light square bishop. Let's play knight D7. Just prophylaxis against e5. Bring this rook over. Now how about b5? White almost isn't just inviting me to play this move, so I'm going to do it. Okay, this, this position of this knight looks very odd, but I'm going to continue with b4. And now I have a strong preference for taking this pawn if it works. Take, he takes c8, I take b2. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to do this. Just that quick calculation, it wasn't looking clear to me. So this might be better. Okay. Let's just do this. I guess you can take on e5 and then take on b4 now, but I do have queen b6 after that. Okay, he's not going to play that way. Let's take queen b6 now. Mm, knight d5 is coming at the end. Not good. <clears throat> hmm. uh, spending too much time, but I'm grappling with these problems, how to deal with this. Okay, let's do this. Not sure about that move at all, knight on the rim, but what can you do? You gotta play a move at some point. A4. Really wanna play A6. Can't justify it though, let's do that. This could be downright awful with uh, the weakness of D6, but See what happens. Okay, now at least knight f3 is a threat. Yeah, he sees that. Hmm. Take that guy. Let's go here. He can take d6, but he'll be weak on the dark squares at least after that. Might be some trickery in the position. Like, let's see if um, he takes on b4, because then I can check, I think. And then come back to e5, it looks like. Yeah, I think that works. Check. Because now he doesn't have a convenient way to block it. If he blocks with any of the major pieces, he just loses. Bishop f1 loses the queen. 
He has to play king h2, so I get a check on e5. Uh, only thing is, this position might not be the easiest to win. I will certainly try. Oh, my time is a big concern here. <laughs> Just realizing how low on time I am. Mm, okay, I'm going to take. I know this is maybe a dubious decision. Drop his bishop. Got overexcited. push the H pawn. He's going for the home run already. <laughs> okay, check. And mate, okay. Cut that close. Maybe in this line I shouldn't play bishop g4 so early. I thought this was the reason why white played h3 so early, but maybe I'm wrong. Bishop g4 does give up the bishop pair. And I'm telling you guys not to give up the bishop pair unless you have a really good reason to do so. Yeah, maybe I should just play... Well, I don't know, though, because if I play knight f6, he can play e5. So let me just check this position. This is one I'm definitely going to have to look at with the computer. It says knight f6, so go into examine mode. So if knight f6, e5, what's going on? Because this, this looks dangerous, right? Allowing discoveries from the bishop. Bishop takes g6. And as played, bishop g4. Okay, now the computer likes that move. This might be a line. This could be a theoretical line, and I'm just showing my ignorance in the smith moore gambit. I mean, it felt like the position should be fine. And even with b5, b4, it looked like I was getting an initiative. But I wasn't able to do much with this position. Okay, so here I wanted to take on c3, but in my cursory calculations, this position struck me as unclear, because I think it hinges on how much trouble I can create with that b-pawn. And it just seemed to me that white could eliminate it. Not right away, though. Rook takes b2 with the bishop here. I thought maybe knight c4, something like that. But perhaps I can use tactics. Yeah, queen a6 to pin the knight to distract white. So that's not clear. But somehow the game went wrong, because after rook b8, bishop b5, I had to move this knight. Yeah, and I think white's clearly better. I had a lot of issues in the center here. My knight being offsides. This is not a well-placed piece. You pretty much only play a move like knight a5 if the knight was able to come to some stable square. I played it out of necessity, because I didn't really see a good way to defend here. One little tactic that's worth pointing out is if I do this, I think white just wins because after take, take, they have knight d5. And if my queen moves, there's this tactic, rook takes c6. And trouble on e7 if I take. So I was trying to avoid that happening. I think white was wrong to go for the, the d-pawn. That was not a good decision because even if this wins a pawn, they seed a lot of dark square uh, territory or scope for my bishop. So I think it was incorrect for them to go here. And actually in this position, I thought I was just straight up winning because I didn't realize that at first that the white queen defends the rook. Now, if they hadn't um, kind of panicked and started trying to, or maybe not panicked, but got overexcited and played so fast in my time pressure, they probably would just win this game because I'm so low on time. They played a5 really fast, dropped the bishop, and I was able to convert after that. Okay, so let's summarize the results for this session. Started off poorly with those three wins, and then I did manage to win the remaining games, although there were a couple that I shouldn't win, like the Chess Brain game, the Charm City game, and the Bochkarev game. We saw I was a beneficiary of my opponent's disconnection. So three losses and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wins. Let's call it, you know, three or four quality wins. Like, I think the two games against Ohanesian were pretty good. Uh, and even the game against Ditto, not so good. So, actually, really, those two games, 
Uh, in the game against Chicago City, Chicago chess Tim. It's funny, there's Charm City chess and Chicago chess Tim, but yeah, that game and also the two Ohanesian games were the two, the three wins that I was happy with. The Kyborg game, I played pretty well. These two were, eh. So, mixed bag this session. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll be trying to play some more Blitz. I'm, I'm liking these pools. I'm liking the competition I'm getting out of the ICC pools. So expect to see me back in here again soon. All right, hope you guys are having a good week. And I'll see you guys again soon.